and the COMEX, and they're all represented on this chart. And the obvious one is on the far right, and that is silver. The eight largest traders are short 183 days, 182 or 183 days of world silver production. And as you and I talked off air before this interview started, that's six months of world silver production that commercial traders, all the collusive commercial traders, are short in the COMEX futures market. The four traders, that's the red bar, the green bar is the eight, and the red bar is the four, the largest four. Uh, the four largest traders are short, what, 120 days? So the, the five through eight traders are short the difference between the red bar and the green bar. And that's the same for all of the commodities going right down the list. And as you point, correctly pointed out, the short positions of the four largest traders dominate the, the, the uh, uh, f uh, big eight short positions in all the commodities, no exceptions to that rule. And uh, you'll notice, make careful note of the fact that gold, silver, platinum, and palladium are nailed to the for, uh, to, nailed to the right of this chart, and with the, the odd exception of cocoa once in a while for other reasons. Ed Steer pointed out that silver has been consistently nailed to the right-hand side of that chart for the last 45 years, except for a couple of weeks in 28 when palladium was the hot commodity at $3,000 an ounce. During that time, silver briefly lost its position, but it quickly returned as the commodity with the largest concentrated short position in history. Until this changes, the market for silver will remain stagnant. Now, take a look at crude oil on the far left of the chart. The big four traders are short about four days of world oil production, and just two days in some cases. Let me ask you this, if you took the short position in silver, which is 182 days, and applied it to crude oil, what would happen? The price would likely drop to $5 a barrel, maybe even $3. Such a large short position in crude oil would crush its price, just as it does with silver. This has been the case for 50 years. As Ted has correctly pointed out, if the short position didn't exist or was more modest say, at the level of soybean oil or copper, the price of silver would be well north of $100 an ounce. Keith Newmeyer's three-digit silver price would become a reality. If these short positions in silver and platinum, with gold and palladium right behind them, were normalized like other commodities, their prices would be sky-high compared to where they are today. The Commitment of Traders report shows this concentrated short position, which Ted has been warning about since he started in this business back in 1985, and even before that when he was getting the COT report once a month by mail. Now, we get it every week, so we have fairly recent data. But this concentrated short position has always been there, and it's what's keeping the silver price in the dirt. These eight traders, all working in collusion, are controlling the market. EOT report, if people are interested, uh, let me just bring this up here. I got it right here in front of me. In silver, these eight traders are short about 55% of the entire open interest in silver. 55%. You know, so it doesn't make any difference what the other 45% of the traders do that are long or short in the, this commodity. The big eight, all working in pollution, as Ted points out, um, control of price. And in gold, it's even far worse. Let me just bring it up here. In gold, eight traders are short north of 60% of the total open interest in silver and gold, which is right now the open interest is 444,000 contracts. That's about 270,000 contracts that the um, big eight are short. And they're all banks, all investment houses, and they're all sitting on the price. And as Ted has pointed out for decades, until that changes, nothing changes. The other aspect of this uh, paper position, this concentrated short position, is it seems to be accentuated at times that are the least logical if you were trying to make um, ordinary uh, profitable trades or hedge, hedge an actual physical position, that sort of thing in the market, such as during thinly traded times in the market. Do you have any comments on the, the uh, the glaring uh, uh, aspect of that, that it happens at a time to have the most impact on the price rather than the least impact on the price. Well, Dunnigan, thank you for that softball question. I appreciate it. First of all, 
let's put let's get set the record straight and ted is correct absolutely correct in this no silver producer none zero nada is is playing in the comex futures market they're not hedging any positions at all not at this price that's for sure they're not hedging it for mine production or uh building a new mine or anything like that there's a new mine no new mines are being built it's all being financed equity finance there is no physical trading going on here this you know no hedging physical hedging by producers it is all the banks and the reason they show up in the thinly traded markets like that is because it does the most price damage that's where the they can uh sell a lot of contracts or they can engineer prices lower it has the maximum effect on the price especially in a downward downward uh trajectory uh so if they show up they're going to show up there it's one of their favorite places to show up but having said that okay uh you tell all you have to do is take a look at what's been happening this week so far i mean even today uh you take a look at silver you know silver was doing fine it was up i don't know 15 or 20 cents or whatever it was uh and then at the, the comex open they hammered it down to like 45 cents in the matter of an hour uh so it doesn't and and yesterday was even worse i mean they hammered it down 70 cents in the space of what four hours during the new york trading session so they can hit this thing anytime they want these eight traders and it's just eight traders uh um are, there's also the rest of the commercial traders who used to be long that everybody is short in the commercial category in silver and gold right now it, it's something we haven't seen it popped up about two months ago or three months ago and ted and i were both astounded that every commercial almost virtually every commercial trader the big eight and there's 57 traders in the commercial category right now in silver and you can bet that 50 of them are short silver right now so you know they're all working together and all working in collusion and uh, like you pointed out and correctly is that they do hit it in the thinly traded illiquid globex trading system overseas but uh hey they can do what they want whenever they want and all you have to do is look at the price of silver yesterday when they hammered it into the dirt so they have no shame and they don't give a damn Ed Steer stated that they have no shame and they don't care who sees what they're doing because they have an objective to keep the price down and that's precisely what they're doing. This brings up another point I wanted to discuss with you the Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC. One of their charter duties is to ensure the proper functioning of markets. The idea of a concentrated position that can manipulate the price seems to be the exact definition of something they should be monitoring. Ted has been a vocal critic of the CFTC's neglect of duty. Do we know any more now than we did over the past decade about this aspect? Well, I'll tell you what Ted is always a perfect gentleman in interviews, but when you talk to him on the phone, he is not at all nice. I've heard him thunder on, and I've had to hold the phone away from my ear several times because he was absolutely enraged. This has been going on for 40 years. Ever since he first sent a polite letter to the CFTC back in 1986 or whenever it was, saying, "Gee whiz, look at this. The concentrated short position by the four largest traders is off the charts. How come you guys aren't doing anything about it?" He expected they would fix it right away, but of course, nothing happened. It took him 10, 15, or 20 years, however long it was before he realized they weren't going to do anything. and that this was deliberate policy what the commitment of traders report shows is the management of silver gold and platinum prices by the us government or its proxies in the us banking system that's all it is the traders are all us banks and if you follow the trail of money you'll find that the us government is involved up to its eyeballs ted is fully aware of this and it's the reason he was driven to take this to law enforcement But of course, nothing came of that either. However, this is the market we have to live with, whether we like it or not. But as Ted will also tell you, one day it will end, and it will end when the physical demand for the metal exceeds the ability of the eight largest traders to maintain their short positions. At that point, the price of silver and gold will rocket higher. Until then, though, they can do whatever they want. So, to recap, The CFTC is in on this scam from top to bottom, and they're all working together to keep precious metals prices under control. Welcome to the American empire, where the price of everything is managed from top to bottom.